Right now we are headed to Jokang Temple. Uh, we're just walking through the downtown streets right now. So this is the first fridge bound pray and they are just doing a pray here so you need to hold each other your hand and you need, should need to make such like that this is a represent of the Buddha and then the, you can keep on your hat that's a symbol that you are thinking about the Buddha what is he looks like once you are taking down from the head to mouth you need to think about Buddha's what he teach in this world and then take down to the heart when you put down here this is follow with the same as his thinking like this way they are going to lay down on the ground to pray for the Buddha this is so cool. We've just come into the temple and just out here in the courtyard you see so many people practicing prayer, just doing their own thing and I've honestly never seen anything like this. <laughs> Tsongsen Gampo founded Jokong Temple back in the 7th century because he wanted to make Tibet a united country. To get everyone to follow him, he needed to come up with some way to give himself more power. So he got the idea to find a religion that is Buddhism and let the people follow that. And once he found this religion and the people changing to mind and they will be trust him. They will be follow him, then easy to control whole the country. Such like that target and idea, he built this temple for the Buddhism. And then the, before he built this temple, here is a lake, natural land, and a lake. So this place, a lake, which is called the Watang Lake. We call Watang so in Tibetan. So means lake. Watang is uh, like a looks like a very very flat land with the milk so back in the day there used to be more than two million uh, monasteries and nunneries but unfortunately as time has passed most of them have been destroyed um, but we are fortunate enough to be able to go visit some of them any of the history that you want to uh, learn about or see about the monks will go into the Patala Palace it is drawn on the walls there and painted and that describes all the history of of these monasteries and of these nunneries. Oh, <laughs> 
So Roni has just brought us to a local restaurant here. Um, it's only locals here and you actually have to share the table with other people. It's um, a bit cram, but I'm sure it's going to be really good local Tibetan food, so I'm pretty excited. This is excited. so cool. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Something that I was a little bit shocked to find out. So this is black tea, and there's a lot of salt that's actually put into the tea. They really like their tea salty. I'm not gonna lie, it's not my favorite. <laughs> What I mean, I'm just really thirsty, so salty and thirsty. It's like salt water tea. <laughs> but hey, it's what they have. I mean, they probably think it's weird to put sugar in it. Um, yeah, but I was a little bit surprised when I took a sip of that. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I was like, what is this? Yeah. Some potato curry, yeah. some sort of green vegetable with noodles and rice. And we have been assured that these are the traditional dishes. What are your thoughts, Jordan? It's really good. Perfect spice, perfect flavor. This is my favorite. This is so bomb. This is good too, but this. And also, um, she gave me some milk tea to try. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. Thank you. Thank you. I would try it, but I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> it's really good. I love milk tea. <laughs> We have now come to the Sarah Monastery. It opened in 1419, it's so pretty old, and this is where the monks will come for the debate, and they'll have that just over that way. Um, there are monks also living here as well, just like the other one that we visited before this. And yeah, I've uh, noticed there's a lot more monks walking around here, or maybe they just come here for the debate, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I don't know, are we allowed to be here or not? This is a normal practice for the monks. They study each other. They can share the knowledge each other, slapping hand and talking each other. But that language we can't understand, whether you are Tibetan or not. This is one of the religious language. Based from this culture, they are going to improve in knowledge by that debate way. And they, now they are going to do the personal between two monks. One is sitting down there, one is standing up. Who's standing? He's the question person. And who sit there, he need to give the answer. Giving the question person, he has some special things to do before he asks. He slap the hand. The slapping hand lets you open your mind and focus on him. And then he will move the prayer beads on his shoulder. It's just a, make an active 
for that debate. They are somebody so very, very serious, somebody so very, very loving each other to talk, uh, sharing the knowledge. This is just up to them what the topic they are talking about. What type of questions are they asking them right now? Uh, they do a different kind of the question, but uh, how to say some of those are related with the religion. The one guy, he seemed quite angry, do you know? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, he has uh, his own idea to give you answer. And you have uh, your own answer for your question. Then those two answer going to fight each other. Sometimes they are angry at each other. Your answer is not correct with that question. Something like that through this communi communication will be makes you angry sometimes. But that uh, debate is uh, just a training. Jordan is struggling a little bit with some altitude, but thankfully our guide Rooney has got this whole yeah. oxygen set up here and he's come to the rescue. Yeah. 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 It's very normal that uh, people seek in Tibet uh, because she got a very, very tough day is from yesterday. She took a lot of the flight and she got uh, uh, very, very tight. That's why she feels uh, sick today. This is normal. Yeah. Does it go in my nose? And also, yeah. Yeah? yeah. I've never had this. It's making me feel so light. <laughs> Jordan's getting high. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you can explain what you feel before. Uh, so, before it was way worse. Um, I just felt like every sickness in the world had come to me. <laughs> like I felt so nauseous. My head was heavy, like my lungs tight. Like I felt like I was blacking out, hot and cold. Uh, like so loud noise in my ears. This is making it sound so bad. No, but this is a real thing. This is what altitude does to you, so. Yeah. We are at the uh, 3,600 meter in Lhasa. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be uh, going uh, higher than that. Mm -hmm. The next town is uh, 300, uh, 900, uh, 3,900. Three sorry, to the Shikazi city after two day, and then the next day, I think more after four day, we will be at the Everest base camp. It's okay. around 5,200 meter. Yeah, so that's oh the God. one of the highest place or highest uh, schedule in our uh, the highest place in our schedule. Yeah. 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 Do you uh, feel any better? Or uh, kind of hard to say. It's hard to yeah. It's hard to say. It's like such a weird sensation. <laughs> <laughs>